winning state championships. I've been very lucky in California. It's really hard to win state championships. A huge state, first of all. Um, you know, the state is about 15 hours driving. It's a large state. And um, they have a crazy rule there. You play your age group and your enrollment size. And then if you win that group, then they take the best teams and put them all together. And they have an open division. So it's very difficult to win. And we won three of them. And the point that I want to make is in those three state titles, uh, I've run three different offenses, so I don't think it's as much what you run, but how you execute, how you get your kids to perform, right? It's not so much what you do, it's just emphasizing how you do it, and I think that's what we've done over the years, is really stress that. I think, you know, in talking to a few of the coaches here, you know, we're all here to try to get better, and I think the biggest challenge that we have with kids today and with adults is, is communicating with them. Try to find a way to push their button, right? Because kids aren't like the old days when they went out and would shoot baskets for hours. I was telling uh, Coach Osiris last night that, you know, uh, in my high school, we had six shooting guns. Six. You know, those guns that shoot the ball down when you shoot and it comes right back to you. Well, you know, most colleges have one. We had six because I emphasize shooting so much. But what I didn't like about the shooting gun is the kid didn't have to do anything but just stand there and catch and shoot the ball, right? It made it very easy for them. And I don't know if you have this problem here, but in America, everybody's got a trainer. You know, everybody's playing with different teams. They've got a lot of people telling them what to do. And we struggle with that because it's hard to influence them and communicate with them and try to get them to do what we need to do. Uh, I started getting into this offense, you know, when I first started coaching, I ran five out with no post play, just a lot of passing and putting. Then I went to Duke's motion offense, which was a 1-3-1 one, one, with a lot of screen, partner, perimeter, perimeter movement, post perimeter movement, and whatnot. And then, I um, had a lot of success, and we were always getting to the final four of the state, which was pretty good. You know, we did that 11 out of 14 years. But we weren't getting over the hump. We weren't winning the big game. So the one year we lost, and I was driving down to watch, I played football and basketball at Notre Dame. So I was going to watch Notre Dame play basketball, and as I'm driving to the game, I'm thinking, I gotta change what I'm doing. You know, and I really believe it's really important for you to think about this. If it ain't broke, break it. Right? If it ain't broke, break it. So I have won 89% of my games in my career, and we're coming off a you know 29 and three season, and I'm thinking I got to change everything I'm doing because we're not getting over the top. And I decide to go to this Princeton offense. They call it the Princeton offense because Pete Carrill invented it. And what you'll see here, what I'm going to show you, is there's a lot of different concepts, and I know you'll be able to take a few of these and implement them with your players. Because the cool thing about it is it gives you a lot of freedom. Now, if you mention the Princeton offense in America, people will roll their eyes. They don't like the Princeton offense because in the old days, when Pete Carrill, the inventor, ran it, they would hold the ball for four minutes before they shot. So everybody thinks it's a slow down offense. Well, it's not a slow down offense because A, there's a shot clock and you have to shoot. You know, in 30 seconds, so you have to put the ball up. But the truth about the offense is it creates really, really skilled players. That's what I like about it. And my goal, as yours is, is to grow your players. That's what we do. I hate when I talk to a coach and they say, my players aren't any good. Well, that's right, they're not any good. You're supposed to develop them. That's what, that's what the idea of coaching is, right? So I had this kid play for me. He was a freshman, which means he was 14 playing on an 18-year-old team. And we were in the state championship game for California. And before the game, they're doing layup lines. And I called the way over and I said, isn't this exciting? We're gonna do this four times together, me and you. We're gonna play in the state championship four years in a row. And you get to do this. And they did like ignore me, didn't say anything. Next time he came through a power run, I said, are you with me? 
And so we're going to do this four times, me and you. This is exciting stuff. And he goes, you got to talk to my dad. This is right before the state championship game. So we have a winning the state. The next dad called his father on the phone. And I said, yesterday I mentioned to your son about how we're going to do this for four years. And he said, you got to talk to my dad. What's going on? He said, oh, we're going to leave. We're leaving school. And I said, why? He said, well, your offense is too restrictive. It doesn't allow my son the freedom that he needs to have and whatnot. And I think we'll get better exposure. I said, okay. I've been coaching 24 years. I've had over 70 kids get college scholarships to play basketball. All of those kids were very skilled. They developed the skills running this offense. I said, so it's not really true. This is the best thing your son can do is be here. I said, now, I'll show you what, I'm going to show you the offense. I really don't have to show this to a lot of people, I told them, but I'm going to show you this. I said, when your son comes down the court, he can do whatever he wants with the ball. Let's just assume he enters the ball to the elbow right there. It's, let's just say he goes this way and he sets his screen. His first option is to pop, catch the ball, and shoot a three. His second option would be to lift fake, take it in, score with his left hand. His third option would be lift, get in the rim, play with the guy in the corner. His fourth option would be to come off a screen on ball by the postman that threw him the ball and shoot a jump shot. His fifth option is to turn the corner off the screen and get to the rim. His sixth option would be to dribble past the screen and get a drift screen for a three. His seventh option would be if the drift screen was there and he dribbled at it, he would look for a lob. His eighth option would be after the lob, he would seal in the lane. His ninth option would be to back screen here and step out and shoot a three. So when your kid comes down, he can do whatever he wants. He has nine options. Now here's the problem. Your son can't do any of that stuff. He can't do one of those things. That's why he's not doing well in the offense. So if you transfer, you can hide the fact that your son's not very good. But if he stays here and we teach him all those things, he will be a very, very highly skilled basketball player that will be able to play anywhere in the country. And the kid ended up staying, and at five foot nine, he started in the Pac-12. And you know, he's a great player in the Pac-12, did a really good job. So I think, you know, selling it and trying to get these guys in line to understand where you're trying to take them is really so important. Now, we have a one player, any player out here first. A couple of things I think you have to do. Got one ball, just going to the hoop here. You know, to run this offense, you know, Pete Carrillo, who invented the offense, his thing was, you're never stuck. There's always an option that you can do in this, right? And, and the hook shot is such an important part of this because his theory was, anytime you're stuck in here, and I got a seven foot kid on me, I can always come and shoot a hook shot. So. We would teach all of our players would have to be able to hook with either hand. So just start on the block right here and execute like a left-handed hook shot, right? Good. Then go to the right side, keep going back and forth. So we go right-handed hook and a left-handed hook, right? So skill we want to develop with our guys is the hook shot. Um, we're doing left-handed and right-handed all the time, okay? Another skill we want to do is all your players have to be able to post up. So start over there and just back cut through, and I want you to seal the lane. And then we'll get you the ball, and you have to be able to score your post. And what we teach on that cut is, let's say you're guarding me. When I back cut this, I'm gonna cut past you. You're guarding me here. I'm coming down to try to beat you at the spot. If I get to here, now I'm gonna step here and seal you really deep, right? So you want your players all to be able to post up and seal in the paint. There's no bigs, there's no littles. Everybody's just a skilled basketball player. Third thing, they have to be able to shoot. You know, and that's something that I don't think we do enough of. I mean, we shot, kids in my program shot a thousand shots a day. We had the gym open at six in the morning, 
our kids are expected that they're going to come in before school or after school shoot thousand shots every day. And they got to the point where they could really shoot it, right? And then the other skill we really want to coach out of this is you have to be able to rip and go. So if we set a screen here and we catch the ball, we really emphasize clipping, getting the ball to this hip, clipping his hip and getting to the rim. Let's see that footwork. Just catch the ball. I want you to set a screen like that direction. Good, stop. Stop, set a screen. Open this leg up. Now, rip it to the other side. You get past the guy. Good. Good. All right, so we would do developmental drills to do all of those different things, okay? Now, to show you the offense, we have four players come out here real quick. 